rectify. Now, when I turn on the circuit, the commutator section here, all we're gonna do is we're gonna be shutting the circuit at the right time, or appropriate around the right time, and what you'll see is the radiant spikes appear on the screen. Right now, because of the slop in the shaft, we're only seeing part of what's here. Occasionally you'll see four, three, or whatever, but when this is right on time, and everything's touching right, there's six every time per revolution there. They go pretty fast. We can turn it off. That's a scale division of uh, one volt per division, right? No, that's five volts. So it's a little less than five volts. Let's go to one. It's about three volts, DC, without the, uh, the radiant. When we turn the radiant on, the measurement on that at three volts still is off the scale. Um, once we bring it to five volts, it's still off the scale there. We'll multiply it by 10. So each block is, if five and 10 is 50 volts. So that's 50, 100, 200, 300, probably about 500 or 600 volt spikes and some of them even get higher. All depending on the timing and when this hits just right. But a really high potential there. So what I do, we'll go ahead and turn that off for a second. We'll hook up a couple things to it. The output here. We'll take the scope off for a minute. Alright, this is a 12 volt LED, we're producing uh, about 3 volts out, um, we're able to light that up with just the uh, common normal DC generation, no problems there. If we turn on the, uh, the radiant circuit, it gets a little brighter, and I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it actually starts to pulsate now a little bit. It's not as steady as with an off. So, uh, just a hair brighter, but flicker, it, you, it, you're starting to see the pulses, the spikes through it. Um, got a little, this is a three volt DC motor. Uh, it runs that fine. When we turn on the radiant, it doesn't affect it, none that I can tell. It doesn't seem to go faster, it doesn't make any more noises, but uh, on or off, it runs the motor. What's interesting though, is uh, I can go to the lamp here, and what we've got is a uh, 5 watt LED uh, 120 volt replacement house bulb, and with Without the radiant on, we get no light. When we turn the radiant on, we get light. There's a high potential, a, a different type of potential for whatever reason, and it's able to power the LEDs only with it on. I don't understand exactly. It's capturing. It's using it. The uh, the other thing. Oh, let me turn off this light so maybe you can see the LEDs a little better. Now, the motor's running, we got power to it, we're generating. What I'll do is I'll disconnect the battery charger, the motor will spin down, um, and uh, we'll, actually I wanted to show this too. This, and we wanna, But uh, once I disconnect the power, the, the, the motor will come to a stop, but uh, the power will still continue to make these, res these spikes, even without the power there. So there, there's, this power is not hooked to these coils in any way, form, or fashion. This is just surely 
a regular generator with a circuit that is closing the circuit at the right time to capture this spike and we'll let that run down. You can see the sparks going on here. Um, the higher that potential is, the bigger the spark is and I've had some other circuits and things that um, I've played with with increasing that but the LED continues to uh, flicker there. You can turn it off and the light will go off. You come back on. As long as the uh, as long as the shaft is turning fast enough to get this magnetic flip and uh, pole change in the coil, it, it, there's time enough to do the spike. Once it stops, it stops. But anyway, I really want to show you that if you can, the the idea of capturing the circuit or closing the circuit and, and capturing this energy. Um, with the monopole motor, we, we it shows us, we fire the motor to ca capture this spike. What, uh, what I found is there's actually more than one spike in that time frame. And I tried this commutator um, for a little while and it, what, it did work. And what it essentially did is one of the brushes from the uh, rectifier rode on here the other one wrote on here and when you timed it right you would get five sparks instead of the one so on the screen it looked like 30 sparks every revolution so you can multiply the output of the coil by how many times you can turn it on or off within a set amount of degrees from in rotation you can't just have this on and off the whole time there there's areas that it's it's not there it's only there for like I don't know, 10, 15 degrees. So the, the bigger you build this wheel, the the easier it is to turn it on and off, you know, because it, it travels more faster, or it's got to go a faster, longer distance in the same speed. Um, you can do more time. Um, I have worked on a solid state circuit that kind of worked for a while. It worked for about three days. Same principle you have to know the timing of when you want it to close but uh, the circuit was uh, uh, also backed by a PWM and what that did is it was I think something like a thousand Hertz set and it was just ready to go and every time it got a, a, a hit from the other sensor it would fire this opening so each time it was like the whole it looked like fire on the oscilloscope with with these radiant spikes it actually rounded off like fire it was really crazy but after about three days um, I think it ate up the transistors and so forth so it's something I still want to play with um, and experiment with but the idea here of closing the circuit several times in that same time frame you can get a spike these are these are all free. This shaft was already rotating. It didn't slow down when I started doing this. It didn't speed up any. So, the more times you can do it, the better. The, the more you can collect. So the next idea with the second version and the uh, the window motor is we want to incorporate a motor, a generator, and this radiant collection system in one solid you know unit together and that's where this would be going is the the next one the motor has one co one set of coils the chargers another set of coils and as we build that uh, you know I'll definitely explain how we're doing it and what's going on but that's the next generation of it is taking what I've learned here and uh, moving on and and uh, trying to uh, to get uh, something that's just self running by itself and uh, I think I'm on to the right trail. Um, please subscribe and follow along. This is Rob Bush. Peace.